Well, joined now by Dr. Maggie Ensign, who is the president of American University of Nigeria. She's also chair of Adamawa Peace Initiative. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you for having me. Well, you have some interesting stories, uh, perspective about uh, the Chibok girls. Uh, tell us about it because we understand you have 27 of them. Um, yes, as you probably know, the night that they were kidnapped, 58 of them escaped. Yeah. And um, one of our employees' sister was one of those who escaped that night. Um, the university has a different mission from other universities. Our mission is to be a development university, to okay. make sure that our community grows as well as our students become leaders. So this employee came and said, since we're a development university, what can the university do to support my sister and her friends who escaped? So in August of 2014, my head of security and I drove close to Chibok and brought 11 of those who had escaped and parents came initially because you can imagine how parents felt about their girls coming to a university after what had happened to them. In fact, one of the moms said, you know, they were kidnapped and now we're giving them to you. You have to protect them. So it was an interesting first few months that many of the parents stayed. Ten more came, more came, um, who discovered what was happening. And then just last week, one of the, I believe, ten who went to the U.S. with a group um, came back. She wanted to come back to Nigeria, and her friends were so happy to welcome her back to, uh, to the university. So how did you, uh, one wonders, now that you have 27 of them, one coming back from the U.S. and also joining. So what are they going to do? There? Are they going to go to school there as well? Are you, um, what limits? They're in very intense educational programs. Um, since okay. We've had them now for a year and a half. And the first group that came, we hired a whole set of teachers to help them, as well as a counselor. So they've been in intense programs to improve English and math because, um, not surprisingly, they weren't quite ready for university-level education. Uh, I'm very happy to say that last year two of them took and passed the jam, one at a very high level. So they're fully enrolled at the university. The rest, depending on their level of education, they're in a different stage um, of their education and training, and they'll be with us until they graduate. They're supported by the university, by the founder, and by a private donor in the U.S. who has said he will fund all of them if we could find them. Now you, you, you said uh, you also look into the developed community. That's yes. uh, one of the um, focus of uh, the American University yes. there. So we're, we're trying to look at the outcome of uh, insecurity around yes. Nigeria's northeast, uh, the uh, emergence of uh, displaced persons, which is yes. uh, huge at yes. the moment. Uh, you have uh, a concern for the displaced persons in the northeast. Yes. What exactly have you found out and how many of them have you had contact with? Well, you know, this has been going on for several years and the university in 2012 actually formed the Adamawa Peace Initiative, which is an initiative of all the religious leaders, community leaders, business leaders, academics. It's about 40 people now. And for that whole time, um, well first, before Boko Haram emerged as a vicious force in the northeast, AUN and the Ottawa Peace Initiative were working together to identify vulnerable youth. And unfortunately, it's not hard to define vulnerability in our environment. It's children who've never gone to school, who've dropped out, and as this got worse, orphans and IDP children. The members of the Peace Initiative would identify them and the university would then put them, and we do, into a Peace Through Sports program that's huge. It's trained thousands of young people. And two of our recent ones are Feed and Read for girls and boys to give young people on the street a meal and to teach them how to read. We've had young people in those programs say, because of these, we didn't, we didn't join Boko Haram. So I believe a discussion of security has to talk about prevention as well as response. But let me tell you about our response. In um, 2014, in August, the Emir of Mubi asked the AUN API to come up and to bring food and clothing. And what we found in Mubi at that time was horrendous, and we realized the situation was getting worse. As you know, um, later last year, Mubi fell, and that was when the IDP situation for Yola became huge. A town of 400,000 um, doubled, and we had 400,000 IDPs. There's a misperception that majority of people who were IDPs went to the camps. And it was a very different situation where we live. Most people lived in the community. 
They lived with other poor people. We had a driver at the university who housed 50 people for up to a year. So this IDP crisis became a real issue for the university and for our peace initiative. At the height of the um, insurgency and IDP uh, problems, the university and peace initiative were feeding close to 300,000 people with funds that we raised ourselves, through the founder, members of the board, a few people from Lagos, Mr. Um, Dengote also assisted us. The worst of that crisis is over where we are. The majority of people have gone home. Um, it doesn't mean the crisis is over for them. I've been up north twice, including last Saturday, where we did a reconciliation trip in Michika, and um, the infrastructure needs are tremendous. People's homes were burnt. Mm -hmm. Schools are gone. Government buildings are gone. There's no health facilities. So I think it's, I'm glad you're focusing on the IDP issue, but the issue has changed now. Mm -hmm. The issue is one of taking care of people who've gone home to their villages and making sure they have the basic needs that they need. I'll give you an example. We went to Michika Saturday. Um, we were invited up the university's peace initiative to begin uh, working on reconciliation, which is a really critical issue now that people are home and they're dealing with everything that happened. As we drove into Michika and we were taking food for 400 vulnerable families, which is between four and 5,000 people. As we drove into Michika, I started seeing women on the road, and I mistakenly thought, oh, it's market day, how exciting. No, 4,000 women were coming to greet us and to get food. Wow. And it was startling, because we didn't, we didn't have that much. So this week, um, the university has taken more food up. So I think it's really important that people understand the basic needs are still really critical. Security, of course. Security is improving. Uh, where we are, Boko Haram can only do isolated attacks. Yeah, because uh, many will be asking, look, and then if you think of all those uh, attacks, yes. is AUN safe? Completely safe. AUN um, has, I believe, the best security force in the country. Um, people who work for the university, who've been trained by an American, a Marine, who came in five years ago to, to um, help us with our security. The university has never been under threat. In fact, the university has been a great um, actor for change and peace in the community. So we've remained safe, um, and I think that's very important. But back to the IDP issue. The issue now is to make sure people have enough food and medicine. There are no medicines. There are no health facilities. And that, of course, security for them as they go home to these somewhat isolated villages, that security also is there for them.